and welcome, I'm your CodeMaki. So I started programming when I was 10 years old. I'm 37 now, so that was 27 years ago. I've already got quite a lot of experience with programming. Nowadays it's basically second nature to me, and I make tutorials on this channel to help you on your learning journey. But recently I tried doing something where I'm a complete beginner and it was a fun experience. That was cooking. Now for me, I really just know the basics. I live by myself and I don't starve, I can feed myself. But I really just make super basic stuff. So 90% of what I do is really just chicken and rice. There's really nothing to it, so really just add some salt, just put it on a pan, just flip it over and that's it. Or I make some jello, which again, really just boiling water and that's it. So when it comes to cooking, I'm definitely very much a beginner. And recently there's a nice recipe that is going viral over here in Portugal and Brazil. It's some nice strawberries with some kind of cream and some red thing on the outside. It looks delicious, so I definitely want to try doing it myself. I've always wanted to gain some cooking skills and this seemed like a nice fun challenge. So I found a nice video tutorial on how to make this and I tried making it myself. So I tried doing that and I found some interesting comparisons with programming. Specifically, cooking is actually very difficult with one thing, is that it's really hard to debug. Basically with programming, I can just write a debug.log at any point in the code and I can see exactly what the code is doing at each specific point. So it is very easy for me to analyze what some code is doing and if there's something wrong, I can really just add logs and figure out what exactly is going wrong. But with cooking, that is actually very difficult. So over here on this one, this thing was staying liquid for quite too long and I had no idea. So am I doing something wrong or is it really what it's supposed to be? Looking at the video, she doesn't mention how long it goes from being completely liquid to being slightly solid. It really just changes from one clip to the next. So I really had no idea. So am I doing something wrong because mine does not look like this at all? I kept staring and really just stayed liquid pretty much all the time. So again, since there's no debugging, it's really hard to know, am I doing something wrong or is it correct? And do I really just need time? So do I really just need to trust the process? I had no idea, but I did it. I trust the process and thankfully after a while it did start to work. And after a while, it literally means like after 25 minutes, it started to become a little bit solid. And it was only after like 45 minutes that it finally started to become actually proper solid. But again, for a long time, I had no idea. Am I doing something wrong or am I following it correctly? That's another thing that is really difficult in cooking which is how it's actually very difficult to iterate. If I'm writing code, if I'm making some kind of game, I can write the code, test out the code. Then if something doesn't work, go back, rewrite a bunch of code, test again. So the iteration speed is pretty fast. The code takes like 10 seconds to compile. So I can write to some code, test something, write again, test again. I'm constantly iterating. I'm constantly testing new things. Whereas over here, if I had made some mistake, basically my only option would be to go back, redo pretty much everything. Once again, since it's really hard to debug, I would have no idea what was wrong. So I would have no idea what would I actually change. So in that sense, definitely very difficult. That is sort of the same issue that I have whenever I do some work with electronics. It's fascinating, I love doing that. But since it's all physical, it means that iteration speed is very limited. If you've got some kind of circuit and the whole thing doesn't work, if so, then it doesn't take just a few seconds to rework some things. You've got to possibly solder some new things. You've got to get some new connections, maybe even get a brand new board. So I guess it's one of those where it's awesome to not take for granted just how awesome it is that programming has such high iteration speed. You can build your games, write some code, rewrite some code, test again. You don't have to waste any physical material. You don't have to waste a ton of time. You can just keep testing it out, iterating until you get a great result. And even when this thing was starting to become slightly solid, even then I was still wondering, so, okay, is it solid enough? Because obviously I don't want to burn it. And again, if it was programming, I would just add some logs in order to figure out what exactly the code is doing. I would add some logs to figure out some kind of temperature. But over here, there's no logs. I really just have to look and have to pretty much guess, okay, is this good enough? Is this going to burn? I have no idea. Thankfully, in this case, the answer to all these questions was really just trust the process. So I just kept doing it. I kept mixing it for like 45 minutes until it did seem fine enough and it wasn't burned, so it was fine. Then I just put it onto a plate and everything seemed pretty fine. Again, it was definitely very stressful not knowing, am I doing everything right or wrong? Looking at the original tutorial didn't really help. Since cooking is very much based on looking and just knowing, okay, is this about to burn or not? It's really hard to get concrete numbers. Again, there's no logging. So I really just had to trust it. But again, thankfully in the end, it worked out. Then I just packed it in some transparent film and the whole thing worked fine. Now, finding the ingredients themselves, this was also a very tricky part of the process. Normally I go to the supermarket pretty much just once a week and I basically get in and out in about 15 minutes. I walk the exact same path, I buy the exact same things, so I'm very efficient. But over here, buying this stuff, stuff that I've never seen before, this was actually quite tricky. I spent over one hour just walking around the supermarket randomly trying to find all kinds of random stuff. I have no idea what is the difference between condensed milk and cream, but apparently there are two completely different things. I also didn't even know there was such a thing as powdered milk. I mean, I know babies eat some kind of powdered milk, but I didn't know that thing existed basically for adults. And apparently this recipe over here, this one takes vinegar. I thought maybe it's a different kind of vinegar, but no, apparently it's the same one that you put on salads and things. It seems strange to put that on something that is meant to be sweet. But again, that's because I don't actually know what vinegar is meant to do. Comparatively, when it comes to programming, if I have questions of those, I can really just look at documentation. This tells me exactly what the types are, exactly what the functions are, what the fields are, exactly what they do, what they're going to return and so on. All that information thankfully is right here on documentation. 
Whereas when it comes to cooking, I had to browse around trying to find all of these unique items, which actually leads to something very important. So one big question that I had in my mind as I was doing this mini challenge is something that I always try and answer in my own tutorials. It's basically answering the why. For example, why does this recipe need vinegar in the final part? The final thing doesn't smell or taste like vinegar. So I'm assuming it does some kind of chemical reaction, but I don't know what. What would happen if I added more of this milk powder? Would it maybe get heavier? Would it get more sticky? Would it get more loose? I really have no idea. Not knowing the why behind each ingredient is quite tricky. But again, just like programming, I assume that is something that you'll learn with experience. I'm sure an experienced cook knows exactly what each of these individual ingredients do and how exactly they combine in order to make the final output. Just like if I'm making some kind of interaction system tutorial. In there, for example, I make sure to explain why we use interfaces. We do that so that the system becomes more modular, more able to support more different interactions. The why is very important. It is very important for you to understand the why, so you know why things are being done, as opposed to really just blindly copy pasting code. So if I continue trying more cooking things, I definitely want to understand the why behind all of these ingredients. Why are all of these things needed to make it work? What would happen if one of them gets double the dose or half the dose or doesn't exist at all? I really would like to learn the why behind that. Then cooking also has some weird measurements that I had no idea existed. I assumed the whole thing was going to be in milligrams or milliliters, but nope. There's actually a bunch of strange measures. All the recipes that I found use something called a shikara. I have no idea what this is. I have never seen this word in my life. So I went to Google and apparently it's some kind of teacup of sorts. But again, that doesn't quite help me too much considering how there are teacups of pretty much every single size. So which one of these should I use for the recipe? No idea. So I really just grabbed something and hoped that it was fine. Again, not a thing that is fun when compared to programming. In programming, if you tell me words like variables, interfaces, polymorphism, generics, dictionaries, reflection, extension, and so on, I know what all of these words mean. Again, because I've been programming for 27 years, so I know what all of these are meant to do. But I'm very much a noob when it comes to cooking, so I have no idea what exactly these tools are meant to be. Then when the whole thing was cold, then I started trying to make the little strawberries in the little bubble sort of thing. I'm definitely not very skilled in my hands to do this kind of thing. I tried making some nice balls, but they all came out a bit strange. But still, despite that, I think it came out decent enough, so yeah. I actually had enough to make 10. Then putting the sticks on all of them to make sure that the whole thing doesn't move too much. On my first experiment, the whole thing, the stick also ended up being very loose inside of it. Again, I have no idea if I did something wrong or not, but thankfully over here, there were no issues there. Then on my first experiment, I actually messed up on the final part quite a bit. I think I mixed the wrong ingredients and ended up with way too little liquid. And then I also let it burn. I literally went away for just two minutes. It was fine. I came back and the whole thing is burned on black. So yeah, on the first attempt, it didn't go very well. Although I do have to say, in terms of taste, it did taste pretty nice. It was a bit burned, but it tastes great. And on my second try, things again didn't quite go according to plan. I put on the ingredients exactly just like the tutorial said, using all the amounts that they mentioned in that video. I had done a little food coloring, even though this one did not have any measure whatsoever. So I have no idea. Maybe the final result was because I put way too much of this. I don't know. Then I put the whole thing under the fire and I made sure to watch it so that it didn't burn again. I was literally watching it nonstop. This time I made sure, okay, it's definitely not going to burn, which I must say was quite annoying considering how this took some like 20 minutes. So I had to stare at that for quite a long time. Then I just kept looking at it nonstop trying to see, okay, is it done? In this case, the tutorial mentioned how it needed to be at a certain temperature. But again, I'm not used to cooking, so I really don't have to, also I don't have any kind of thermometer like this. But thankfully, tutorial mentioned a trick to figure out if it is on the correct temperature. Basically, just dump it on cold water, and if it becomes solid right away, then technically it's good. So yep, I was basically trying that out every single time, dumping it over there every few minutes, and nope, it took a while to make it work. I literally tried that over and over again, constantly trying the same thing. And despite looking like it's about to bubble, nope, it wasn't working. And again, I was pretty scared of having the same thing, of burning it. Because back to the same thing, I really wish there was an easy way to add some kind of logging to cooking. Which I guess in this case, if I had the right tools, if I had a thermometer, maybe I would be able to tell. Is this already ready or not? Anyways, thankfully after a while, it seemed like it was hard done. But then when I went to add the cover, again, the whole thing for some reason looked very transparent. Again, the same thing, cooking is really hard to debug, so I have no idea what exactly did I do wrong here. Did I mess up on some of the proportions on the beginning? Maybe it needed more sugar, maybe it needed more water, maybe it needed more vinegar. Again, since I don't understand the why behind each ingredient, because I don't know that, I don't exactly know what exactly I did wrong here. In the original tutorial, it is extremely red, so she dumps it in there, and yep, it gets perfectly red, there's no transparency whatsoever. So yep, this looks awesome, I wonder why mine didn't end up this way. I thought maybe it was some kind of timing thing, so maybe it needed a bit more time. So I did just that with a little bit, and yeah, now it actually became a little bit burned, so now it became way too dark. So you have no clue what I did wrong in this final step. Maybe too much or not enough sugar. Maybe too much or not enough water. Maybe vinegar. Maybe it was the coloring. Really no idea. Anyway, so you have the final part didn't quite go according to plan, but still pretty decent. Again, considering how I'm very much a cooking noob, I'm quite happy that I was able to build this. All right, so time for a quick taste test. Again, it looks a little bit strange, but let's see if it's good. Hmm. 
Honestly, yeah. Actually, it tastes pretty nice. So yeah, got a nice strawberry in the middle of some cream, something like that. So yeah, definitely a fun experiment. Hmm. Não pode beber. Não pode ir. Yes. Não pode. Não, não. Não, não. Não dá a beber. So if this is just a fun video, just me sharing my experience with you on something that I'm a completely new at, I'm sure some of you have quite a lot more cooking skills than I do. And if you look at me when I'm programming, you might be impressed by my programming skills. But again, it really just comes down to experience. So based on this one challenge that I did, my advice to you is, first of all, know that everybody starts from zero. So if you're just starting programming or game development and you feel like you don't yet have much knowledge, that's perfectly fine, that's perfectly normal. We all start from nothing. Number two is definitely do try following tutorials or courses. If you've tried to follow some kind of guide, you will learn quite a bit faster as opposed to just trying by yourself, just tons of trial and error. And number three, extremely important, is learn the why behind each decision. So if you're following some kind of tutorial and making some kind of interaction system, let's say that it uses some kind of interface. Learn the why behind that. Perhaps go research interfaces individually. For example, in my free C-Sharp course, I have an entire video talking about interfaces. So whenever you come across something that you don't know about, definitely take some time to go research it. And then for the future, when you see that thing again, then you will know what exactly does it do. And again, important, like I said, learn the why behind it. And if you know why you use something to build something, then as you build your own tools, as you build your own custom original games, then you will know all the tools you have at your disposal to solve every problem. So if it was fun for me to experience being a complete beginner on something completely different, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.